Here we go. Are we live? I'm going to click go live and then we will be live. So Ooh. I'm going to assume that we're live right now. We may not 605. Be. Perfect timing. It says preparing to live stream the meeting. And it's I, live. I hope we're my live. Thing, my thing says live. Look, Are we live? A, here's what I want to ask. I don't, don't want to ask. I just want to talk about this because. What? Are you going to put me on blast? Yes, and- of course I am. We have to Why? talk about it. We're, we were having such a nice time. Because I wish, I kind of <laughs> wish. I'm Let's glad just you're introduce here. Janet Varney. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, our dear, dear friend who we love very, very much. Hi, Janet. Yeah. Hi, Janet. Hi. From the JV Hi, Club everybody. podcast, also on the Maximum Fun Network. Me. Should, should I make this official by playing? Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the theme song because I Ooh. know how to do this. I have figured it out. All right, here we go. Okay. This is very exciting. See if it works. DJ Hal. On the ones and twos. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Max Fun Drive, clean slate. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Yeah. I did it. Satisfying. It is very satisfying. That is, uh, of course, Mike Furman, along with whom I convinced Janet Varney to get an Oculus. Really? You got an Oculus? It's true. Yeah. Why am I yelling? I <laughs> I got so mad. <laughs> it's true. You got an Oculus? What's it like? Do you play Beat well, Saber? Every time, every time I talk to Gags about it, I am embarrassed because I've done so, so little with it. That's okay because I've done so little with it as well. I would feel bad or I would feel like a real idiot if you were like, oh my God, I've already beaten this game and this oh game. Have you tried this yeah. one and this one? I'd be like, I I just go in, in just watch tilt brush building, and right? paint. Yeah. Yeah. I like watching movies on the side of a building. Yeah. Ken, Ken can, Plume, can, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. It's Ken Plume and his air conditioning. <laughs> Ken Plume. It's very hot. The air conditioner is off. Thank you in very North much. Carolina. This is a live show. Oh, my I'm on time and no AC on. on. I didn't know. Look, I didn't realize. Do you you don't have an Oculus, do you, Ken? Because you have everything else behind you. <laughs> is the <laughs> Oculus Mark. the only thing missing? Because <laughs> <laughs> I have a Dig, there's one in there. Look, there's a PlayStation VR right there. Oh yeah. That's what I decided to get. Yes. Because I had friends that were on it, and I had a PlayStation at the time, and the Oculus was super sure. expensive. I get it. But now, did you, did Furman, you decide on laser discs back in the day as well? <laughs> this is where technology. Is I going. had video discs, which were the what? analog version of that, which was basically a giant vinyl record that played video. Did you guys ever mess around with a PXL two thousand camcorder as a kid? Yes. My friends and I made videos on that. Fisher Price made a camcorder where you could, as a little kid, make movies on audio cassettes. On audio cassettes was the medium. Yeah, it was great. I don't know anything about this. I remember it existing, but I did not have one. And then uh, hipster skateboard kids took it over, and it became like the thing to do was make skateboard videos on audio cassettes, which now in 2020, I can't think of anything more Silver Lake. (laughs) <laughs> they were our Those generation GoPro <laughs> skateboard videos on an audio yeah, cassette. That's true. Uh, yeah. uh, I should point out we're the reason why we're doing this. The reason why we're here doing this live stream. Not only because we all wanted to hang out together and make you watch, but because it's Max Fun Drive and uh we are we are sister shows. We got the JV Club with Janet Varney and amazing guests. Like a incredible podcast if you've never listened to it before, you are depriving yourself of like if people like our podcast because they feel like they're sitting in the room with us, I remember re- getting to record an episode of JV Club with Janet and getting to go hang out in the self same room that you were sitting in right now, right? Isn't that the same room? Uh, no, I think nope. we were in the, the, yeah, I think we were in the den. It's the other end of the house. Anyway, we were, yeah. <laughs> there we were. That's, that's all. <laughs> Even in recording. I should have just it, said yes. Yeah. Who cares? When it was over, I was <laughs> sad because I wasn't in the room anymore. Yeah. Like in the room of recording the podcast. Of course, Janet and I could just talk anytime. I guess that's a bad example, <laughs> but if you listen to it, you like want to be there and you feel like you're in the room and Janet is a great conversationalist and it's a great exploration of what people, uh, what lives were like when we were younger and, and how who we were influences who we are now. Is that fair to say, Janet? Yeah. And, and just a lot of the time we just talk about how dumb it would be to buy video discs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh- oh, sorry. They're, they're movies on a record. <laughs> it was an amazing um, technology. 
for its day. Bob, you, I haven't had you on yet, so you got to come on and defend yourself. It'll be fun. Defend your video <laughs> yeah. desk. I like to put everyone on the defense I am there. before we start. I will bring yeah. my, gotcha my video desk copy of Star Wars with me. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, I just want to point out I drew with eyeliner an M and an F it's on my S. face because because oh, oh Max dear Fun, Lord. that's right. Yes. Also, oh, it's also Max also, Fun. Yes. Why wouldn't I? Because I I don't I don't have any reason to ever dress up for anything anymore ever. So I might as well. <laughs> I'm acting like I would normally be going to a rave. That's basically <laughs> yeah. what I've done. I've been to one rave in 2000, yeah. and it was not for me. But suddenly, now that I'm once again basically stay at home, as I'm sure we'll be ordered to do in Los Angeles shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Now, now is my time to really shine. With do you my, have your glow sticks? Latent wave stuff. Yeah, yeah your past fire. Probably ready. do have some glow sticks. <laughs> the jeans that are like this big around at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Does the Emily have fire. glow under the black light? Yeah. It probably would because it is kind of a metallic. Oh. Mm. Look at that. See that? See yeah. that unnatural? That's probably made out of nuclear. Waste. We have a Max Fun rave. Yeah. We have a Max Fun rave. That's what this is. <laughs> Wait, let me t- I yeah. can't even turn these lights on and off quickly or pretend I can. But this is Max Fun Drive. Uh, you can see over my left shoulder, uh, which is to your right, that you can become a member right now if you haven't already or upgrade your existing membership at MaximumFun.org forward slash join. But this is not only creating awareness for the drive, but just to say thank you to all the people who support both of our shows in the many ways that you do, both financially as members and sharing and commenting and leaving reviews. All that stuff is super helpful, and we notice – and appreciate all of it and all the interaction from listeners to both of our shows is great. And we are here to appreciate all of you and clean the slate of topics you have suggested. That's right. These are all of the topics for those who are not familiar with our format. We settle the world's pointless debates once and for all, for all time, definitively. Many of them that we get suggested are not quite, I'm not going to say worth an hour's discussion, but they're not quite worth an hour's discussion, but they're definitely worth a mention and a figuring out. So we brought Janet on to help us with that in her disarmingly joyful and kind way. Impossible to eliminate anything lest their feelings get hurt, even if they're inanimate objects. Yeah. I'm the perfect person to clean the slate. Oh, God. It's going to be more no. on the slate when we finish because yeah. they'll be like, oh, how could we forget? <laughs> Welcome to Filthy Slate. What a mistake. First ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just going to be mucked up. Just so yeah. you know, anything that you eliminate or that you are privy to eliminating Janet, everyone who was ever involved with it, anything that has ever touched that specific thing will fall into a deep chasm of death. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. That's going to be very okay. painful. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Before we jump in, I have a question to ask. This is a sincere question. So mm-hmm. around here, hair salons have closed and I, I, I love the person who cuts my hair, but even when they were open, I would go and see that she was like hanging out with people on the beach. I was like, there's no way I'm going to get my hair cut. So I got this, which is a kit. It has. Oh, are you cutting your own hair now? No, no. Jennifer's going to cut my hair. Should I, is this something that I should live stream? Do you think people would want to see? Is it a flow bee? No, it's a full set. I'll show you. It is if you hook it up to the dirt devil. Yeah. The dirt devil on it. No, it's like a full. Oh, it's a Tennessee flow clippers, beat. Two clippers okay. and all the guides and there's scissors in here. This is going to end so well. It's so I, when I, this is Jennifer's genuine reaction. I was like, do you think you would cut my hair? And she went. Oh, no. Yes. That's what I do, too. Yeah. Anything like that. I'm always up for. So who knows? Run. I cut my are own you the, hair. Are you the groomer? Am I the groomer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, give me the thing. Yeah. I can do this. No, no, no. I, any of your <laughs> friends come to you like, hey, I'm thinking yeah. about doing that. Shave it up just a little yeah. bit. You're like. that. You're what? That You're thinking about removing that mole? Let me, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get Doctor. my tools. Yeah. Oh, God. But we're not here to cut my hair yet. Should I, no. should I stream that? Would you watch it? Yes. Would you be yeah. on while we did it? I wouldn't miss it. All right, fine. What's our first topic? Maybe we will. We'll all reconvene. Look, if in 20 years none of us is married, let's reconvene and I'll get my hair cut on the internet. And you won't have gotten your hair cut Mm-mm. since 20 years ago. <laughs> I'll, I'll, look like, I'll look like Steve Gutenberg and don't tell her it's me. Which for oh some reason we all what? watched for the first time the other night. I've never seen Don't Tell Her It's he's, Me. He's overweight it's and he's very sick weird. And then loses weight and he like adopts this persona where he's got it so he can go out with Jamie Gertz. 
He gets like this really long blonde mullet and rides a motorcycle. He's a cartoonist, yeah. I think. All the like fa- the identity, hidden identity movies mm-hmm. of that era, we were obsessed <laughs> with that. Is yeah, it just this sounds Hollywood like sad. Got a little better, and it was like we have got to yeah take full advantage. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone yeah, ever tell can, her it was a him? lady out of Robin Williams? <laughs> she never found out at the end of the movie. She was like, she "This never is found great." Out. Roll credits, and yeah. that was it. You have to wait till "Don't Tell Her It's Me" too. <laughs> this time, tell her it's me. It's called "I Told Her It Was Me." <laughs> oh, Ken, what's our first topic? <laughs> so we have a bunch of topics that were kindly suggested by our listeners. Great. I'm going to be prompting with a topic. I'm going to disappear for a bit while they're discussing. I'll come back in with the next topic. But maybe if you cut your hair for us. This is the summertime. So we're going to start with a summer topic. And this is from listener Chris Rooney. Mm. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. And the topic is flip-flops or sandals. There's the difference here that flip-flops are the split toe and they go clackety clack when you walk. But like a sandals, like a Tiva. You could still have a toe thing, a toe split for a sandal. It's mm-hmm. just, yeah. I think, I think a sandal does a sandal, it ha- does it have a backing? Does it have like a, oh, like a way a to keep it on so, your foot differently? So like the, mm. like, a, would, a, would you consider a Birkenstock a sandal, even though there's no yeah, thing across you, the no, back? You've, yeah, I, I would. But I'm not trying to poke holes. I'm just saying, like, what are we considering? Because, like, yeah. I think a flip flop, and tell me if I'm way off base here. Mm. I think a flip flop is way more practical and useful and throw it in a beach bag or slip them on to get the mail. But sandals, you can find more stylistic opportunities with sandals. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I want to uh-huh. say <laughs> it's, there have got to be more people out in the world like me who cannot sustain a flip flop without kicking one off. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what, how do I walk like shoop, 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 shoop? Cause I feel like I shoot them off my feet yeah. really easily. And I you also do feel walk like aggressively. I did walk very aggressively. Yeah. So the projectile issue is a problem. <laughs> and I also feel like somehow I find a way to step on whatever, like a glass shard that's going to get n- oh. into that rubber. Not saying it goes through to the foot, but, mm-hmm. or just like I, I take an awkward step on a, on a rock and the, and it's just not a strong enough support. And so somehow it like hurts the ball. So I'm a sandal person. But I understand what you're saying about flip-flops. But I also feel like I see Mm -hmm. people wearing flip-flops in situations where I don't feel that they should be. And so that has cast a a shadow on flip-flops in general. (laughs) Yes. Like at the Academy Awards. (laughs) I'm always weirded out when I see someone with flip-flops in a bar. Yeah. That like, like, but sandals in a bar, I could be like, okay, they're a sand. I guess it's also in the summertime, there are more styles for women's sandals than there are for men's sandals. I pretty much can only think of Birkenstocks and Tevas and Crocs. Are Crocs considered sandals? Mm, They're their Uh, own category. They're their own. Yeah, they do make a thong style, which is what a flip flop is. That is like the split Mm -hmm. toe kind of flimsy shoe. And if you see people wearing those in a bar, I guarantee you that somewhere on that bar's logo is a winking parrot. Like for sure, a winking parrot. A winking parrot, like hanging off of the, the inside of a margarita glass, or, yes. or hanging off of the pocket yes. on the shirt. Yeah, <laughs> just a drunk parrot, and and a yeah. busty lady is involved somehow. Man, and wings are twenty five cents on Wednesdays. You just described my favorite bar in Florida. <laughs> uh, all of them couldn't, couldn't have been more sure that would be the state you would name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What do you, that, you like just named my thing? favorite bar in Michigan. No, <laughs> yeah. that's not. Yeah. That's not there, what you say. Right up in the youpers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, the other thing about flip flops, those flimsy kind of sandals, uh, just another opportunity to have an accident is if you go to to the boardwalk, like a proper boardwalk, there's space in between, and a thin enough sandal can get caught in there, and then your yeah. your foot does that thing where it flexes forward. It's painful. I think a sandal. Yeah. Is and I also, and they're slippery. If you're yeah. if it's a wet pool area. Might as well be barefoot. Yeah. You're probably going to survive more. It's, but from, <laughs> from what point. both Sorry. of you are saying, it sounds like you are frequenters less of the <laughs> more fancy flip flops that are sold by sandal companies. Cause like every flip flop problem that you guys are talking about are the problems that you get with the like 99 cent store, super thin. <laughs> 
Like it's barely an insole that you're just walking around on the ground with. Uh-huh. Do you think you guys, if you were given better flip flop, I don't know why I'm, I feel like I have to be <laughs> flip flop here. I don't know. Captain flip flop. I, I agree that flip flops have a place in time. Yeah. I absolutely have flip flops. I do use them to shuffle over to mm-hmm. like if it's a, you know, hot tub situation. Right. But yeah, I just need something. I need something that's going to protect my klutziness more. Yeah. And since that is kind of the general idea of shoes <laughs> yeah. to protect you from the ground, <laughs> yeah. maybe yeah. sandals are, in fact, the better choice. Flip flops yeah. feel like they are, they are the, I'm technically wearing shoes. Oh, uh, shoes. yeah. yeah. I'm allowed you know to be in the 7 Eleven. Yeah, I'm because technically wearing shoes. This counts as a shirt, also. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> this flap of, of rubber and plastic strap mean I can go yeah. wherever. This is my passport to yeah. the world. And this right. dicky means I can get into this cheesecake factory because <laughs> it's a shirt. Yeah, and those are the only two things I'm wearing. Yeah. I'm yeah. porky pigging it otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Nobody so it's sandals. Uh, yeah, sandals. Ask I think it's sandals. Answer. I hope you approve, sandals. Chris. I hope yeah. that's the answer you were hoping for. Yeah, I hope you want to va- – a lot of times, Janet, people want not validate. They're like, is this right? Like that will be something that we get. Is it okay to do whatever? Which means 100% they do it or they're yeah. very mad at somebody who does it. I'm pointing yeah. at – nobody can see and yeah. you can't even see my arm. But this one feels – if you were a flip-flop person, Chris, no more. Yeah, no more, no more flip-flops. Yeah, you'll be yeah. you'll be glad you did. It's okay. It'll, you'll be glad you did. Ken, what else do we have? And also, wait, can I just say, wearing- can I just say that whole idea of someone just wants the confirmation? It is always my favorite episode when we do not give it to them. It's like, no, <laughs> this is not a question. You pour the cereal in first and then the milk. Don't try to get us to validate yeah. your thing. Yeah. I have to yeah. also say, Ken, I love you have headphones. Can you just turn to the side so we can see? Like they wrap around the back instead of oh, over the top. Yeah. So you look Ooh. like if Apple designed Lobot. Yeah. Who is Lobot? Get out of here. What's the topic? He's from Star Wars. He's the guy with the big. Which one's on Lobot? His, Mark his, Porky Pig. Lando's administrator. So. He's, Land- he's Who Lando's administrator. Oh, you're right. He's Lando's I'm sorry, guys. bestie administrator. Yeah. I forgot. Oh, he I, was I forgot controlled by a Lando's wristwatch. And- <laughs> it's not <laughs> a <friend>. and. <laughs> Not so secret lover on Cloud yeah. City. Thank you very much, Mark. He's, he's uh, Cherry Two Thousand, but <laughs> <laughs> the Cloud isn't City everybody's version. Lando's lover in Cloud City. Yeah. That's true. I mean, look, he's it's very his city in the clouds. Man. He loved them all. They see him walking, doing his walk of shame with flip flops on, <laughs> carrying his the heels. Shuffle, yeah, yeah. He's shuffling. He doesn't want to slip. Sorry, what's our topic? Well, everyone, it wouldn't be. We got this without a food topic. So this will be our Great. first clean slate food topic, and it is from Travis Holland, and it is best Danish strawberry apple or cheese. Ooh. Okay. Three fur, three top. Got to choose between three things. Yeah. <sighs> early or a little early to have to choose between three instead of I two. Know. This yeah. is tough. And the fourth is- one, the winner is the one that's not even being mentioned here, which is the cherry Danish. Uh oh. Not on the list. Why was not that left list. off? Why was I don't that? Oh man. Not Why we put list. it back don't on? Get into we go to battle theories. with the weapons that we were given in these trenches. So apple, cherry, or what's the uh, no? Wait, no. Apple now cheese. you're inserting now cherry. You're, wait, into hold it. on. Yeah, I'm cherry. apple, cherry, two thousand, or <laughs> <laughs> that's the Melanie Griffith shaped <laughs> Danish. <laughs> Wait, it's like, are, is that is cherry just a Philly thing, and you're sneaking it no, in there? No, it's like everywhere. You What's this sandwich called? Oh, uh, it's a, is it a Subway or is it is it a sub or yeah, is it a hero? That's right. It's a, it's a hoagie. <laughs> Cherries are exclusive <laughs> to Philadelphia. They don't they exist nowhere else. There's no cherry pie. Do you guys remember when we were in New Zealand? Yeah, there was a grocery store right across the street from where we stayed, and they had a little sign in the produce section. It was real Washington cherries. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, cherries from Washington. Do you remember how much the cherries cost in New Zealand from Washington? And it blew my mind. $60 a pound. Oh, my God. I didn't <laughs> remember they were that expensive. I That's saw them. I was crazy. like, hey, Washington cherries, a little taste of yeah. home. Dear God, $60 a pound. Yeah, that's those are the things that really remind you how far away you are, because so much of yeah. New Zealand is feels familiar and great and then you're like, oh, right, Washington. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look, a McDonald's here on an island away from the whole rest of the world. Oh, yeah. That was For a sure. great meal. Anyway, <laughs> are, you a, uh, are you a breakfast pastry person, Janet? 
I love breakfast pastries. I can't say that I've had a ton of danishes lately, nor can I say that would be my be- my breakfast pastry choice. If I was mm. going to go sweet mm-hmm. breakfast pastry, I'm more of a donut or or dare I say like an almond croissant. No, I feel you. Something. <laughs> I associate good. breakfast pastries with France, like I with mm-hmm. French food mm-hmm. and because that's like what the treats were that my mom would let us get at this French bakery because she was a French teacher. That's the stuff I kind of, that's the sort of go-to for me. So Danish feels more like on a table at someone else's house, but may or may not partake. What other ways was your house Frenchified as a kid by your mom being a French teacher? We would have a bouche de Noël for Christmas, which is just a a cake that's like a little bit of cake and then just mountains of frosting to make it look like a log. And then like so, like little mushroom little uh, mushrooms, sometimes like marzipan mushrooms. And the more they made it look like a little fairy land, the more, the more wonderful it was. Yeah. But that being said, if I had to choose one of those flavors, all I can think too is like, I'm thinking about like truck stop danishes. Yep. <laughs> I'm struggling not to think of, of, I'm struggling to think of like a really high quality, doesn't look like it's been sat on Danish and it's, I'm, and I'm having a hard time. Think about the continental breakfast at any holiday inn. Yeah. Again, <laughs> yeah, that is. It's just like France. Uh, <laughs> I would probably get, I might take the, hmm, I would want the cheese Danish, but then I would look at the cheese and think, I feel like the ratio of there's too much whatever kind of cottage, I mean, a uh, cottage cheese, like whatever kind cheese. of creamy cheese yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. It's better. There's too much for the rest of it, and I would probably take the strawberry. Interesting. I would, I nine times out of 10 will grab the cheese Danish. And not only because I enjoy them, but I think specifically to this argument, I'm going to throw in for the cheese Danish in this Mm. because it is the the only time that I can think of where your combination is a cream cheese filling and a puff pastry. The rest of those apple Danish, even cherry. uh, And what was the other the other one? Strawberry. Strawberry. They all seem like variations on a pie. It's just a pie in a different shape. Mm -hmm. But that one feels if I if I think of that cream cheese and flake mm-hmm. combo, I mm-hmm. think of a Danish. Fair. But I will also reach for it in a truck stop. Oh yeah, sure. And also an audiobook. But it's in a big clamshell of cassettes. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. The the Danishes, you mean. <laughs> yeah. Big it's in a clam- of cassettes that <laughs> yeah. comes with a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Dan Patterson Danish. Danish Skater Patterson. punks, they got that Danish and they started using the cassettes to make skate videos. That's right. Yeah. I don't, maybe I, I appear to be in the minority here, but I have never mm. in my life had a strawberry Danish or seen them. Generally, if there is a small selection, cheese is always there. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's blueberry, frequently apple. I, the three I always see are apple, cheese, and cherry. Those are the three I see. Mm-hmm. See, I always see apricot. At places, sometimes yeah, sometimes you get that I, would too. Get, I would definitely take apricot if apricot were on the table. Yeah, hey, what? Look, ch- guys, show. cherry and apricot. I don't know if we've now doubled down on this conspiracy. Yeah. Um. Mm. So is the winner cherry apricot? <laughs> I think it's cheese. I that do think good. it's cheese. It's so yeah. good. And mm-hmm. for some reason, when I have one, I'm like, you know, what will really wash this down because Beer. it's so rich. Is a glass of whole milk, which is the dumbest possible. I don't know why, because it's less dairy. That yeah, I know. I'm sorry, Janet. Yeah, sorry to do this. No, I'm it's fine. A- but it, that is a that is a like a it's a it's yeah. a heavy commitment. Yeah, <laughs> it's whole like, milk. The issues come up later. You don't think about it at the moment. There's, there is no tomorrow <laughs> when you're enjoying a, a cheese Danish. I, yeah, I think it's cheese Danish, but I'm insulted that cherry wasn't even included. And I'm insulted that apricot glasses. wasn't. Is it? Do you guys say apricot or apricot? I, I think I go back and forth. I think I it's wildly too. inconsistent. I, 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 I alternate. Hey, wait, let me think. Apri- apricot. Apri- and I think I say apricot. root and route about equally. Like possibly like, in the same conversation. Oh. Like, oh, it, we could take a different route. I don't know. What route do you want to take? Like it could yeah, be, yeah. they could be that close together and it wouldn't occur to me that I had to pronounce them differently. Yeah. Ap- apricot. 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 Eh, I'd probably say apricot more. Right on. I do not. Neither of them sound right anymore. You I know, know what does I, sound right? Cheese Danish. Yep. Asked an answer. Asked an answer. That's it. Yeah. I, I support Danish. that. Apric- apricot. What do you say, Ken? Do you say apricot or apricot? Apricot. Well, that, that sound sounded right definitive. <laughs> Asked an answer. Right. I guess that's correct. <laughs> Fair enough. I like the idea, Ken, of you sure. popping he back in and being like, 
By the way, the answer is this. Next question. <laughs> I like, Mark, how you managed in every episode to find a way to relate things to the free hotel breakfast that is your yeah. ever destination on any trip. My my life is about finding a free breakfast. Sure. Pretty much generally. Well, there was no in, joke to the end that of that. ties into our next topic. <laughs> okay. So this is from Ray Smotherman. Okay. And this is... Thank you, Ray. Hi, Ray. Best meal to be the big one of the day, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh. Oh, oh Ray, that's a good one. I mean, one. I know what the, the, right an- the right answer is, mm. but it's never the one I do. Is, is the right answer breakfast? I that's think what the right answer is supposed to yeah. be. I'm yeah. always for a huge breakfast. Breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Who said that? That's what is sexist, that? Is that, by is the that, way. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, probably some very from t- old. From the top down, old. sexist. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Um, how about this? Uh, royal for breakfast, uh, mid-level royal for lunch, and um, less than royal for dinner. Classist. <laughs> Super right. catchy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I yeah. That's I know that's what's good for you, but I typically have the, you know, I typically the have the most, yeah, at dinner. What, what can I say? I feel like this quarantine time has changed things. I used mm-hmm. to, I'm always a light breakfast person and less like expressly we're doing if we are going out to breakfast. Somewhere. Right. Then it's, that feels like a weekend thing, a special thing. Generally very light breakfast. Then lunch is substantive, but I feel like dinner is really where you do sides, you do what, like whatever. That's like a more, that feels like more of a daily event. But now I eat like a big meal in the middle of the day. And then that's, we're good. Like yeah. I, just the timing of when the meal is like meals have no meaning anymore. <laughs> I guess yeah. is the answer, right? But I, I think by and large, I would rather the big meal be at dinner because that also feels like a more sociable time for people to gather. Your day is over. You sit, yeah. you have a big meal, you talk with one another. There are generally multiple courses that you don't get with a breakfast unless it, you're me at a, at the brunch buffet anywhere. Yeah. I love a brunch I buffet too. A, I do too. Yeah. I definitely love a brunch buffet. So, I mean, but should see, Sunday that, brunch yeah. be the biggest meal then? I, I would totally get on board for that. one day a week. Yeah. I would get on board for that because I, because we I think mentioned I mentioned brunch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brunch does feel like. Because I think I'm stuck in a feedback loop where when I do eat a big breakfast, I eat such a big breakfast, like if it's at a brunch, that I'm sleepy. Mm -hmm. So then my brain says, don't eat a lot until you're ready to go to bed. (laughs) 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 So I just keep doing that. Like, oh, I I can't eat too much lunch. I'll have to go straight to bed. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so tired. And, well, look, one thing we can all agree on is it's not lunch. Yeah, it's not lunch. Right? Although you just said that in the middle of the day. Yeah. I oh, agree yeah, that brunch lunch. times are different. I don't know That's what the thing, that meal is. Dinner, yeah. dinner feels like, honestly, I don't know the last time I even ate dinner. But I have breakfast, a large breakfast every day. But the same way that you are, Hal, where it's like, it's you know, you're in quarantines. You don't know, like the, the, and it is, it's always been for me, the reason for a big dinner is the social element of it. Mm. I mean, like, I don't need to cook myself a big dinner two hours before I go to bed. But if, you know, it's closing night of a play and we're all going out and, or we did the matinee and now we're all going out for dinner and we're all going to have appetizers and dessert. And it's like, that's a social thing. But minus the social element, do we, I guess, do we look at this question without, do we look at this question for the moment and stripping away all of the, everything around it? Or do we have to take social into consideration? Yeah. Considering that's the way this show works. Well, by, by volume, if we're talking about how, what are the, the biggest meal in terms of the volume of food you eat, I think it should be dinner. Because uh, because when you have that heavy breakfast, you're sleepy. It affects you for the rest of the day. This is assuming that you're eating irresponsibly, right? We're all assuming that. Yeah, we're all eating irresponsibly. All, okay, yeah. great. Then I think it's dinner because then you're 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 out of the woods of of most of your obligations, and you can just be like, all right, <laughs> let's mean, get this, this body out of the road. Hundred no, percent. Like every every dietitian is like, no, is, have I yeah. taught you nothing? No. Sweating. 
Yeah. You're describing food the way I describe booze. Like, <laughs> all right, do I have anything else important to do today? No. Is. Cool. I think that kind now of I is how Hal and I feel about food in yeah. a perfect world. I kind yeah. of think it is because it's like, let's celebrate by eating delicious cookies. Like that's yes. you and I yeah. are like children. Yes. Hal and I are, ch- are kids. <laughs> that's right. We never yeah. moved on to booze being our treat. It's still like, make bra- let's make brownies. Sleeve of Oreos. Yeah. 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 Those, uh, let's those eat an entire box of cereal. Right there oh. are cherry pie fillings. I'm going to make a pie this week. Oh, I can see. Ooh. I can absolutely see that's what it is now that you're saying that. It's very yep. clear to yeah, me. Yeah, it is very thing. clearly. You, know, you see the rectangular. Mm-hmm. All right. So, but now we snuck this in a few minutes I ago. Like this brunch idea, though. That's exactly what I was just going to say. We yeah. snuck that brunch thing in. Like, I don't know if, I don't know if the question, hey, Ken. Did we, what was the exact wording of the question? The exact wording of the question. Because if it doesn't mention the best meal to be the big one, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh, trying to, trying to add another one. Nice try with the brunch. Isn't it? Brunch. I think, because I honestly think brunch happens once a week. It does. Though, have you ever read any of the Bourdain stuff about never go to brunch at a restaurant? No. Oh, it's pretty great. Oh, no. It's like, oh, it's just, uh, or if you do, just go and, you know, get regular breakfast food. Don't get whatever crazy thing they're making because that's just the week's leftovers. Oh, okay. They're like, hey, man, do you want a swordfish omelet? You're like, oh, you guys had a swordfish special on Thursday. You know, uh, in ter- if it's if we're just choosing between the three basic meals, the three squares per day, mm-hmm. I think it's dinner. You know, this this Friday, to get a plug in. I'm going to be doing the Max Fun Drive dinner party. It's mm. not a breakfast party or a lunch party. It's it's a dinner party because it's so so the social together. element yeah sends health considerations aside. The social element puts dinner over the top on this one. Yeah, but I and also just like being realistic about what is probably true for most people. Mm-hmm. That's when fair. they tend to eat the biggest meal. Yes. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. Look, it doesn't have to be difficult to make a big breakfast. You no. can just crack eight eggs into a bowl and scramble them. <laughs> That's true. Don't think I haven't. Don't think oh, I yeah. haven't. Yeah. Asked and answered. It's dinner, everybody, especially you, Ray. Especially. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ray, I apologize. Hal is in a bad I mood. I don't apologize. Wow. I'm going to make pie. <laughs> oh man, if you could have actually just grabbed one just straight away. Yeah, they're this that would big. be so L T V. I have an easy bake oven. Right. So make them like that. Like the giant phone in the foreground in Top Secret. Yes. Oh, Top Secret. <laughs> I love that. That movie might be so that much. might be yeah. I might need to revisit that for sure. a giggle. Do you have a favorite revisit movie from the lockdown? Uh oh, like going going back. Yeah, like going I watched back. The Princess Bride for the first time in a decade and was delighted to do so. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been watching The Princess Bride on Quibi and it has been a highlight of quarantine for me. Oh, it is are they, charming and wonderful. Are they what did they is it a did they make a series out of it? No, it's 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 a series of episodes, but it's it's a billion different great funny and and just straight up actors taking on the roles and they're all at home. And oh, so that's cool. It's I got to check really, this out. Really really low fi like there's little like Lego figures for the far away stuff that someone's put together <laughs> oh, and like, you know, that. Jack Black plays he he's, you know, and and there's a ton of people who rotate in and out of of playing all of the different roles. Mm-hmm. And so in for, so like one that I just watched Jack Black is on the cliffs of insanity and he's climbing, you know? So he's lying on a series of steps. <laughs> so it looks like kind of what they actually do yeah. in movies. You know, he's lying there and looking up and the camera that it, it's just so oh. clever and adorable. Yeah. I did not know that great. this was happening. I'm very excited to now check it out. Honestly, and I know that everyone jokes about Quibi because they launched at a weird time and have some weird, sometimes not perfect uh, marketing techniques. But mm-hmm. that alone to me is worth the subscription. It is so cute. Fred Savage reprises his role. But then, Amazing. like Adam Sandler is Peter Falk in the beginning, and oh, he's good. does a perfect Peter Falk. It's great. It's great. I'll check Tiffany it out. Haddish gets to do it, like common. There's a bunch of people who play roles that you know they would probably never have gotten to play for many reasons. But um, that you know, getting to see every oh, it's just great. It's great. I highly recommend it. You can also All check right. it out via the free trial, Mark. Great. Well, that's true. I honestly, I, I mean. Part of my brain did go, Quibi, when does that launch? So yeah. perhaps <laughs> it's not been a... Yeah, exactly. 
I do like their idea, though. I still think that's still the thing, right? That you can watch yeah. it either this way or this you way. Can. They shoot. They shoot everything in both directions. You can. Right. I'm on a it's cartoon cool. that comes out every single day because it's hard to describe, but it's horoscopes that are also like these really funny cartoons, um, and it's amazing how like moving the. It's it seems like a nightmare to animate, but yeah. it's a really cool effect. Look at this. Right. A show I didn't know that Janet Varney's on so many shows I don't even know which shows Janet Varney. I'll send you a clip. It's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty it's pretty funny. It's Will Arnett's company and it's it's just ridiculous. What's the funny, name of the show? Your Daily Horoscope. And it's Great. like the actual the it's very meta. It there's like the characters are astrological figures aka they're animals who all mm. work at a company that I think is the one generating the horoscopes. It's like very, very weird and insular, <laughs> but it's really funny. I mean, look, is it going to be as accurate or I should say inaccurate as the Orange County Register has been lately? I mean, listen, this is a real time. This is a big time astrologer that they actually use. They're real. Is it they're really? Actual, they're real really, actual horoscopes? Uh-huh. It's actual horoscopes. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's funny. All right. What is anyway, our sorry, uh, that, next Did not topic. mean to do that. <laughs> No, no, plug away, plug away. Yeah, do it. Our next topic comes from... It's all about Quibi. Cassie Jennings, should I get a free trial to Quibi? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, Cassie, yes. this has worked course. out very well. Yes, please do. Cassie's actual question is... love you, is, Cassie. <laughs> to jort or not to jort? Uh-oh. Okay. This is actually a what bit a of a retro question. Yeah. Were you jorters? Were. Are you a jorter now? I'll give you my thoughts on jorts is they are okay if homemade. If you've just cut off an old pair of jeans, I think that's reasonable. I'm not a huge, personally, not a huge fan of the ones that are like they have like the bottom of jeans hem along the shorts (laughs) part because it's like these have always been jean shorts. You know what I mean? Why did I, I not? I guess I thought you just called them cutoffs. I didn't know that you called them jorts. I mean, you don't have to call them jorts. I don't think there's any store with a jorts section. No, it's that's a pejorative. It is. Okay. It, it is. is like, oh, you're wearing jorts because they're jeans. Yeah. Okay. Or just, you know, jean shorts is a real mouthful. So can we get that yeah. a little smaller? Yeah. Jorts. Please? I mean, I like it. Listen, I'm on board. I sure. just yeah. felt very sh- ashamed that I didn't know that that's what you were talking about. Yeah. yeah, so let's say jorts are an absolute A plus, and uh, yeah, why why do we need to uh, why do we need to close? Why shape? do we need to disparage them by calling them jorts? Where will, <laughs> I generally think with clothing, it's wear what you want. Can we call them little dungarees? Little dungarees. <laughs> oh man, little dungarees sounds like a corporate character that got invented for either a kids' clothing store or a fast food chain. I'm yeah. little dungarees says it's okay to, to wear school me. shopping. Yeah. <laughs> don't or don't possibly cyber like, people. <laughs> or like, no, kids should work in the fields while their parents are at war. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get in that factory, Timmy. Wow. Little, little dungarees needs you. This yeah. newsreel animated character is right. I'm going to sign up right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, jorts I guess I don't have any jorts, but. No, no. Not since the 90s. I had them in the nineties. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I, I have one ones. pair that yeah. I, w- I have one pair of jean shorts that are just cut off jeans that I feel a little bit self conscious when I wear because I'm like, is it okay that I'm wearing these? Are you wearing fine. them with flip flops? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're very in much Florida. A, it is very much a let's go to the thatched roof bar in Florida that has a parrot dangling off of a glass on the pocket. Great. Yeah. Wear your jean shorts. Yeah. Sure. I'm fine with yeah. it. I don't know. Great. I like the cutoffs version better than the hem version. I agree with you. But look, if you're oh yeah, for, yeah. But don't like I don't want to the cutoff version that's so short that the white lining the, po- the pockets oh, yeah. are yeah. poking the, po- yeah. the bottom. The days that's not, dumb. Me. That's not called, for me. Yeah, no. Uh, though I do like. I saw this actually yesterday. I saw somebody who had one of those super short, super tight cutoff jean shorts, but the pockets were hanging below the shorts, but also crazy full. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just like saddlebags. little saddlebags yeah. that are hard yeah. to get to yeah because yeah. the jeans are so tight you know you can yeah. see the same thing in the men's sauna at the ymca <laughs> <laughs> you can see the same thing but yeah sure sure george yeah. sure where are you george shorts. great Enjoy george them. asked and answered that's an easy one you can see mark wearing his george when he washes his car on a hot saturday afternoon that's, that's right, right. 
all to raise uh, that's all to to get people to join Max Fun, which you can do at the address right over here over my shoulder. Uh that's if if we reach one thousand new and upgrading members to our show, do we got this? Mark will post a video of himself in his cutoff jean shorts and nothing else, cleaning his new car. What is what is happening? That's fine. Totally agreed. Uh what? While Can I we social distance you in the background getting your hair cut? Yeah, I'll be in the background getting my hair cut. <laughs> with your Floby? <laughs> yeah, with my Floby. Oh, my God. What's our next topic? Our next topic comes from listener known to all of us, uh, Heather M. Bay. Hello, Heather. Hi, Heather. And the hey. question is, Bill S. Preston or Ted Theodore Logan? Oh, my goodness. Janet, thoughts? No, don't ask me first. I mean, one of them is Keanu Reeves, and the other one is not Keanu Reeves. But he's Alex Winter, who's, who's a brilliant. <laughs> Alex Winter is brilliant writer. and great. Yes, but one of them's Keanu Reeves. Man. I know, but that's why I was wanted to see what you guys were saying because I thought maybe it's maybe maybe you, Alex needs the love in this moment. Maybe he needs. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's the underdog that needs to be called out. That being said, true. I don't choose him. I do choose Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, let's look at the characters. So in the original movie, Alex went, not, not I, I don't want to say Alex and Keanu. I want to say Bill and, Ted. Bill and Ted. So Bill and Ted. Bill's the one who it's at his house. His dad has married the like model stepmom. Who, who and Ted's like, dad is, yeah. right. Who was in the school when they were in the school. Yeah. <laughs> Ed, his dad is the cop. The tough cop, military, uh, guy, right? Threat or military threatening, yeah, threatening to send him to military school. Yeah. What else do we know about them offhand? Bill uh, obviously works as a lawyer because he's Bill S. Preston Esquire. He's also kind of the ringleader. <laughs> and Ted Theodore Logan, whose name by that rationale is Theodore Theodore Logan. Yeah, they they <laughs> <laughs> they they certainly you can't. Uh, they are the yin to the other's yang. They are mm-hmm. two halves of a whole. But it always struck me that Bill was a little bit more of a leader and Ted was more willing to follow. Like Bill seems to have the ideas and Ted is willing to go along with them. Yeah. Now the stakes for Ted are a lot higher as we move through it. And by the second one, I think he's being threatened with – he gets threatened with military school in the first one. But I, I don't think that's gone away after. Mm-hmm. Uh, he still has that fear. So he's got probably higher stakes whereas Bill just lives – in constant shame that Missy, his stepmom, is I think four years older than them. Yeah. And and in the second one, she's gone. She's broken up with Bill's dad and is with Ted's dad. That is the joke: is that she has she's left one for the other. And then I think she wound up with Chuck Denomalos at one at, after at the end of who is Chuck Denomalos? He's the he's the gym teacher who's who's the bad guy. In is in that Bill's the actor's Chuck name? Too. No, that's the character. That's he's the character. Denomalos, name. but his first name is Chuck, and he's a gym teacher. Right. I haven't seen part two in a very, very, very long time. It's great. It is It is one of the better sequels that has ever been made. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that is, Sadler is death. That is a weird hot take. But I so mean, we take Bill. Yeah, it, it might be Bill. Is it, but- it might be, uh, yeah, as a character. Now, I'm thinking about it, and I'm remembering uh, from the first movie that there is a lot. But Ted comes through in a pinch with a lot of brilliant, quick ideas. You know, whose idea was it to set the keys up and rig the whole jail Mm -hmm. so that they could Mm -hmm. escape? And then when they're finally caught, trash can, remember a trash can. And then a trash can that says Wild Stallions drops. Like, Ted comes through in a pinch, but it might be Bill if, I mean, there are some problematic moments in there. Is there one of them that has fewer of the problematic moments than the other? (laughs) Uh, I think they kind of share in that shame together. Yeah, they kind of do. They kind of do. They kind of share in it. And I, look, Keanu Reeves, as maligned as he is, oddly, and we've, I brought this up before. Who will malign him? Like, yeah, if you look at his, I will throw his career up against almost anybody else in the history yeah. of Hollywood, and he will have more, way more good choices than bad choices. And these, mo- like, his love for these movies and his, the the extent to which he buys in and brings, like, tr- he brings truth to it in a way that Alex doesn't, because Alex is more of a, he feels like more of a sketch player in it. Mm-hmm. But as a character, I think Bill is – that's the question. Is, is is the ringleader the better one or is it the guy who sort of follows along but has has higher stakes because he's got military school looming over his head? Are you saying that it's – your argument being that Keanu is – the acting performance is better 
by they're, Keanu than Alex both Winter. Great, like one. It's a perfect. Yeah, they're it's like they're five perfect stars together. versus four and three quarter stars. It's not. Mm-hmm. This, it's not like Alex Winter is fantastic. It just amazes me the extent to which Keanu Reeves commits to that, even after he had already become Keanu Reeves and came back for the sequel, and even uh, through all of that, through every hit he's had, talking about like I can't wait to bring Bill and Ted back. Like, has but been can I ask you this, Al? Yes. On Star Search, who goes forward? The five stars or the four and three quarter stars? <laughs> I think it's the five stars. Well, I, yeah. That is what happens. Yeah. He even has better facial hair when they come back from having learned how to play guitar with their babies on their backs. So good. <laughs> God gave rock and roll to you and oh. God gave Keanu Reeves to us. So what are we going with? I think we're five all going to go with Ted Theodore Logan. Ted Theodore Logan. Yeah. Let's George for Theodore, Theodore Logan. Yeah. Let's keep him at a military <laughs> school. Asked and answered. Amen. Theodore Logan. Station. Station. So, oh, God. Bill and Ted's bogus journey better than Godfather Part 2. How Lublin. Yes. Huh. Because, yes, yeah, because you can watch it without having seen Bill and Ted and it will still make sense. Godfather. That, my parents. There's no story. way that's true. No. My parents, one of their first uh, dates was to go see Godfather 2, which mm-hmm. they walked out of. Because they hadn't seen Godfather 1. If you've not seen Godfather 1, Godfather 2 makes zero sense. If you've seen Godfather 1, Godfather 2 is not only one of the greatest films ever made, but is better than The Godfather, which is already like a Mount Rushmore film. So it, it is, it is oddly affected by, if you watch it out of order, it won't make any sense. You might not even want to watch The Godfather if you watch The Godfather 2. You're like, this is what everybody was talking about? I don't even understand what's going on. Because you don't know – you have all the Robert De Niro stuff, but you haven't really seen Marlon Brando. Like, you don't know who Vito Corleone is. So going but back I, to But when did, career, when like, did a movie cares? sequel – when did its value become contingent on – I mean, listen. The only thing that's great about a really good sequel is you don't have to watch the, the first movie. Like, why, <laughs> why wouldn't you – yeah. And is there a book punish end? someone for being like, we're going to pick this up where we left off? <laughs> <laughs> is there Otherwise, a book they could have called it Godfather, comma, T-O-O. Like, Did your T-O-O. parents also <laughs> do this a date also, night and Bill Ted's bogus journey? Story. Yeah. Yeah, they walked out of that because they hadn't seen it. <laughs> and they're like, oh, the way, that I understood. Godfather part two, no clue. Yeah. I didn't need fun to fact. see the first. Uh, my first ever date was a blind date to see Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And I think it was my 10th time seeing it in the theater. Oh my god. Was that god. middle school? Yeah, I was 12. Janet Varney, have you ever walked out of a movie? Oh my gosh, yeah. I've walked out of a lot of movies. Really? Oh, really? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like that is <laughs> like more than 50% of the movies you go see. And by the way, I don't know if I've ever asked for my money back. So it's not like a a thing where it becomes a customer service issue. Uh, I got here it's before just, the credits started. Yeah. It's just it's just me being like my life's too short for this. I gotta go. <laughs> like that is a, like I'm imagining any movie. Like you sit through all the trailers and movie starts in 15 minutes. You're like, nah, yeah, and then you're just out. What? Is no, the- I mean it's like you know I'll get oh, I'll get a ways through it. I remember very specific ones that I walked oh. out of. Some of which I have come to feel kind of bad about. Can you tell us one that you don't feel bad about that you walked out of fairly early on? Yeah, couples retreat. <laughs> really. Yeah. That movie feels like and doesn't just feel like is also proclaimed to be they just wrote that movie so they could go on a vacation with their friends in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all Adam Sandler it films not- now. He's like, I want to go make a movie in Hawaii. Look, you've earned yeah. it, Adam. I'm not not yeah. yet. But you heard like regard me and then you just got up and walked out. You're like, nope, got to go. <laughs> wait, wait, what is one you walked out of? What is the best movie you've walked out of? Like that? Well, that you, you I watched the, no, like, the one that great. I. Yeah, the one that I feel the most guilty about was My Blue Heaven because I I loved Rick Moranis and I loved Steve Martin and I I don't I just I I I felt betrayed when when I I mean, you know, I was obviously very very young. Mm-hmm. I don't remember who I was with, like was I with my dad? I don't know, but I definitely remember being like, I don't, this is not, I don't want this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. I don't like this. I don't like this character that he's doing. And I and I yeah. got Why out of there, but I also like yeah. worshipped Steve Martin. So there's a real incongruity there that yeah. like I would walk out because if anything, you would think that would be something where I would be like, I've got to stick it out. It's you know Steve Martin. 
Have you revisited uh, it and reassessed it? I'm sure I've seen it since, but I don't. I still don't have any affection for it. I'm sure I saw it and was like, "Oh, this is cute," but I. But that's not one I would cite as being in any way part of like the the Steve Martin canon of stuff that I yeah. I love. I watched my first live auction on Saturday because the estate of Steve Martin. Not the no, he's not he's alive, he's but alive. he was he was he donated a bunch of things and was giving money uh, in the name of Roddy McDowell to the actor's home. So they sold, they auctioned off all of the suits from My Blue Heaven. Uh, and I was watching with Eric because, of course, Eric's like, "Hey, I'm gonna come over. Let's watch that Steve Martin uh, auction." And they auctioned off all of the suits from My Blue Heaven, and at one, one at point. Time. One at a time. And he was like, hey, these are going for pretty cheap. You should get one of these suits because that's like a really nice suit for not a lot of money. And I was like, dude, isn't like the joke of this movie how terrible he looks? <laughs> and it was like time? 30 years ago or yeah. something. Yeah. It's like so quadruple it's like... breasted. <laughs> yeah. Even 30 <laughs> yeah. years ago, all of these suits look like yeah. like David Letterman doing a Dick Tracy cartoon. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just well said. Crazy well angles. Well said. Yeah. Oh Lord. Yeah, I do love me some Steve Martin though. Yeah. Ken, Ken, got, what do you got? Got something for us? I I do. So this is from Michelle Colby. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. And the question is: washcloth or loofah? Ah. Uh, yeah. Washcloth or loofah? I. You know, I realize now. When I was a kid, like my mother had like loofahs and sponges that were loofah like, mm -hmm. and I would see them and it'd be like, this is so rough. This is such a rough material. Why would I ever want to run this over any part of my body, let alone mm -hmm. the most delicate and private parts of human anatomy? But I, I don't think now, anyone is asking you to loofah those. But, but who knows? Go ahead. I, did, at, I didn't know as a child. But now I realize that that the reason behind that is that it's exfoliating that it will help refresh mm -hmm. your skin. Not in your most private of areas. Probably shouldn't do it there. No, no. That's where you use a pet egg. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, that's such a horrifying, that's a, such a horrifying <laughs> yeah. image. I'm not really terribly familiar with a loofah. Is a loofah because I have like just like a – it's a sponge with like a scrubby thing on the outside or a loofah is its own? A loofah is its own My thing. question is, is it absorbent? Because the thing about the big sponge that is great is with a washcloth, you're constantly reloading the washcloth. Mm -hmm. With the big sponge, you load it up once or twice, and it gets you through the whole process. Sure. Like it's a nacho bar. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many things are you putting on the washcloth? I got to load it up. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I got to get – first, I got to put some soap in it. You have to get some. You have to get some Axe body wash. Mm -hmm. Got it. Then shredded cheese. A yep. little bit of pico. <laughs> you press the red button and the chili goes like. <laughs> you don't want that brown little bit of chili that comes out first. You have to stand back, hit the button, so the dried part of the chili yeah. comes out. You, then you get under there. Would you for the press liquid. those Great. buttons? It's like every <laughs> machine Fago and Lego had ever got involved with, where it's like. <laughs> like you just press it and it, I'll like, say I'll say I don't know how to make that work. Yeah, and then he comes out and he's been he's been put in the corset. But it, it, those are the scariest machines because uh, like, I'm gonna be the one who blows it up because I had to have chili. I had to have watery chili in quotes on my big bite <laughs> more than anything else. Uh, I needed to have that chili yeah. and yellow orange cheese brown. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Let me ask you this: Would you rather dispense that chili? Into a washcloth <laughs> or into a loofah? I'm going to give you an honest answer. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which is. Finally. <laughs> uh, I can't. I'm not responsible enough to not let the loofah become super mildewy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, that's, you know, the washcloth, you just pop it in the laundry. You get it taken care of. You can't do that with a loofah. I'm not even sure what you do with a loofah. Mm -hmm. I guess you just have to really wring it out so that it doesn't. But I just feel like that's one of those shameful items that reminds you you're a pig when you're, when you go into your shower and you're like, Oh yeah, see, that's the person I am. That thing's disgusting. Yet I haven't thrown it away yet. <laughs> Because that it. feels wasteful. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's a spiral. Every time you're in the shower, you're like, damn, you crabtree and Evelyn. 
yeah. win yeah. this round. Yeah, I agree with the purpose of both of these things is to, t- is to take care of you. Mm-hmm. This shouldn't be like a house pet where you have to care for it and love it <laughs> or else it will fall apart. Like a Dude, my loofah off. crapped in the living room yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rub its nose in. Oh, oh it was it was like looking at me like side eye when it, yeah. it knew found it, it under the wrong. couch. I I mean, yeah. yeah, it knew. I gave up on creating my loofah. Now I just let it sleep with me because it was <laughs> oh, crying all night, and so I'm a sucker though. for yeah. You're supposed to sit in the other room when it's crying and not I do know. anything. I know. I was supposed to bring my loofah around other loofahs to sort of get it socialized, but once I do, it just starts tugging me all over Kingdom Come, yeah. and I can't deal yeah. with it. It's well, a washcloth. You throw it's too it much in the washing machine, and you're done. Yeah. Can I ask a question that might make me seem like a monster? And I don't know if I'm a monster for this or not. Mm. Is there? Maybe I'm horribly off base here. The loofah and the washcloth generally seem like a step extra. What's wrong with just the bar of soap? You just do this with your hands. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with just doing this with the bar of soap? Like, There's nothing wrong with that. I don't use a washcloth or a loofah. Me neither. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now we're being honest. <laughs> but I also don't rub the soap all over my body. I just I use the soap. Lather, and then I use it and then I'll load up again. You know what's good for and lathering? I use like a body a wash. Of chest hair. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't even okay. use this. The soap, soap, uh, again, it, the, the soap kicks up. I get a residue. I might slip in the shower. <laughs> I don't trust myself. I you just don't have one of those, like uh, one of those, yeah. those mats with the clear wavy mat on the bottom of your tub. Nope. Gotta get Too one of trippy. those. Too trippy. <laughs> on the eyes. If you if uh, I look down, uh, <laughs> suddenly I'm I'm Jimmy Stewart in vertigo if I look down at my feet while I'm doing that. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want my floor to look like the cyclorama from the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Davey would sing in front of. That's too much. I need I need a very bare bone shower experience. Oh my god. No frills. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, I still say washcloth. If, between the two, 100% washcloth. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. washcloth. Asked and answered. Do we have time for one more? I know it's 7.04 we, or we Here's have, we have to wrap Jan- it up. What Janet, I don't know how much time you have. That's what I was going to ask. Janet, I definitely have time for one more. What we'll do okay. is one more. And then what, then for people who are listening to the podcast, you're going to be sad that you weren't here for the extra couple minutes. A little bit extra just for the people who showed up as an extra thank you during Max Fun Drive. Ken, what is our final topic? Our final topic. You're very well lit, by the way, Ken. That ring light is... I know you were joking yeah. before that you got the giant ring light, but it's very good. Yeah, it looks good. Giant ring light. Look, you can see that. Yeah. See it in my glasses? There we go. Yeah. There it there is. There it is. Now I'm in a sci-fi film. So, Austin Bateman asks... Austin. Hi, Austin. Chocolate chip cookies, regular or chewy? Chewy. Chewy. Wait, oh, hold on. Oh, wait. <laughs> I have a cool, but I, lip, I, First I, of all, what's regular? That's kind of an yeah. insult to chewy. Crispy, it's not homemade. Crispy or chewy. But like if you got Chips Ahoy, right? would you want the – do you like chewy Chips Ahoy? Do you like the original Chips Ahoy? Chewy. I would, I'm all about the chewy. Really? Like, chewy. like, it, when, yeah. like I hate Keebler Soft Batch. I want to like them. Mm-hmm. I just Ooh, they're so like, salty. They I mean feel, I haven't had one in a million years, but <laughs> there you are. And, and, that, and the last time I had salt. them, I, I got them out of the lake. So I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, lakes aren't salt water. Damn it. So, well, there's such a thing as a salt water lake. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, Utah. Yeah, the Dead Sea. W- was it the Caspian Sea that turns out is actually a lake? Which I found out on Jeopardy last night. Sure. Probably. Yeah. Anyway. It sounds like it's right. Uh, yeah, it, if I'm having homemade cookies, it's chewy yeah. all the way. You want it like yeah. fresh enough that it's got some hold and it's like golden brown, but also you want a little chewiness to it. You know what's going to help that? What's that? That I have discovered through the years, through my sister's cookie recipe, which I think is absolutely brilliant because it uses less butter and the butter or whatever the fat is in it is what makes them flatten out and get crispier. Mm. Mm. So if there's less of that in there, oh. it'll help that. But her recipe, I know I've said it on the show before, but I want to throw it out there again. Do it. It's just the recipe on the back of the Nestle Toll House chocolate chip bag mm-hmm. plus a cup of Bisquick. Mike drop my sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. very nice. It makes them almost like little a cross between a cookie and a tiny little muffin tops. Oh, that's, that's what I like. Nice. I like a cakey cookie. That sounds good. Yeah, oh, that sounds really good. But are you, Janet? You're generally chewy cookies. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I feel like I was vehemently opposed to the only. I will say, Chips Ahoy would be the probably the only cookie that's more 
what I, I like to use the term sandy. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> More of a sandy tropical chocolate yeah, chip. It is very sandy. Uh, yeah. That I would have made an exception for as a kid. But everything, yeah, in, in general, I, I look for a chewy cookie. Mm-hmm. Like if it's, you know, a cookie at a bakery or something, it's pre-wrapped and you sort of mm-hmm. have the opportunity to pick it up and kind of get a little squeak, get a little test, see if it's got yeah. any pliability. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's giving a little. I want it. If yes. it feels like it's going to just yeah. absolutely shatter the moment I no, that's not for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want shatterable cookies. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Chewy. It's chewy chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. The, but the prepackaged kind, just make your own. You should make your own. That's really great. I've been making these giant chocolate chip cookies that are like this big. They're probably yeah. like, yeah, they're probably like seven inches across. And we will eat them when they're at their chewiest. And the bottom like caramelizes a little bit, which is nice. But you have yeah. to have that soft, chewy part. Mm-hmm. Let's not overlook, again, Austin, the peculiarity of you saying regular versus chewy. Yeah. I know. I feel like oh, yeah. maybe we have a problem. You know, yeah. I brought up with you. I brought up before that people like have their own. I think Austin came here looking for validation. For validation, yeah. For the, for the, I might, for the I might one. say I might say regular versus crispy. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You're, or you're, Sandy. You're, yeah. You tried to like fool us. Fool me once. Shame on me. <laughs> fool me twice. Shame on me again. Wait, the first time it's shame on you. I won't get fooled again. I won't get fooled again. (laughs) Anyway, it's Uh, chewy chewy cookies. Like Jennifer will grab. I just saw her walk past it. She'll get cookies, like when they come out baked, and I like, like let's let them sit and settle. But she is in there with the spatula right away, and they're like. It looks like the persistence of time, like the cookie is half melting off of it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But oh man, if you could make an all Salvador Dali, just like make them look like clocks on top, yeah, and just like melt them over things, I would totally eat that tray of cookies. Yeah, sure you would. Like it could be like on an ice cream cake, and then like melting. Yeah, just draped over warm chocolate chip cookies melting and draped. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, you've definitely figured out dessert. Yeah, and then a little cheese Danish jammed right in the top. That's right. Well, that is it. Chewy, chewy chocolate chip cookies. Asked and answered. That is it. Janet Varney, thank you for joining us, especially during Max Fun Drive. Me. You're always so busy, but you like literally made room to be here with us, and we cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. And oh, you I get, I get, I get so happy whenever you ask me to do anything. It makes my whole week. Aww. I wish, hey. honestly, I wish I'd had longer to look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I still had like days to look forward to it. Well, you know what? I, it could go even longer. Three years from tonight, mm-hmm. we're going to do yes. this. Yes. Yeah. We're going to meet. I'm six. in. Yeah. So now you have three years to look forward to yeah. it. <sighs> we can also, we also are probably going to have a lot of shows between now and then. That works too. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You're, you're, if, we're, if we were like, sorry, we can't work together for another oh, three years. That really backfired on me. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is not rules. working out at all. <laughs> Yeah, anything uh, you want to talk about? This will probably not release for a little while, but anything yeah. anything in general you want to promote or tell people about? Well, I, I, I guess I already managed to sneak in that Quibi, your daily horoscope scoop. So there's that. And then, yeah, I mean, honestly, this is all about Max Fun. And you can always become a member. It has, mm-hmm. you know, whether or not you listen to this a year from now, three years from now, when we're doing our reunion show and the guys <laughs> haven't let me see them for three years, you can always become a Max Fun member or, you know, upgrade your membership. There's no time stamp on that, no time limit. So, you know, feel free to include the JV Club as one of the podcast pick for you if you do that and uh, it's a super fun podcast and I've been doing it for eight years and I've only been at Max Fun for about two years so there's a huge backlog of hundreds of episodes available to you and lots of other amazing podcasts and great people on the network so just bear that in mind that's all we appreciate you yeah and we appreciate you Janet Varney and your show is a delight and you are wonderful and amazing and we love you and we love having you oh, on my boys, so I love you guys thank you thank you thank you for having me yeah. and Ken thank you for putting this together these topics are all closed but there are many more to discuss so please reach out to us on Twitter at we got this tweets or fire off an email to we got this podcast at gmail.com or join our Facebook group where many of these topics you heard came from or originated from I don't probably said it wrong doesn't matter that's facebook.com 
patreon.com forward slash groups forward slash we got this podcast. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, who's not visible to people We're in the there. live stream, yeah. but is here. <laughs> Research, there he is. Researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Ari Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and that theme song that you heard at the beginning, respectively. And thanks to you, our listeners, for giving us a chance to sit down and talk with Janet about everything from Danishes to melting Salvador Dali cookie cakes. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Agliardi. For Mark Agliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We, we got, got this. We got this. Hello there, ghouls and gals. It is I, April Wolf. I'm here to take you through the twisty, scary, heart-pounding world of genre cinema on the exhilarating program known as Switchblade Sisters. The concept is simple. I invite a female filmmaker on each week, and we discuss their favorite genre film. Listen in closely to hear past guests like the Babadook director, Jennifer Kent, Winter's Bone director, Deborah Granick, and so many others every Thursday on MaximumFun.org. Tune in if you dare. <laughs> it's actually a very thought-provoking show that deeply explores the craft and philosophy behind the filmmaking process while also examining film through the lens of the female gaze. So, like, you should listen. Switchblade Sisters. Hey, I'm Janet Varney, host of the JV Club podcast. Ah, high school. Was it a time of adventure, romance, and discovery? Class of 95, we did it! Or a time of angst, disappointment, and confusion. We're all tied together by four years of trauma at this place, but enjoy adulthood, I guess. The truth is, it was both. So join me on the JV Club podcast where I invite some great friends like Kristen Bell, Angela Kinsey, Oscar Nunez, Neil Patrick Harris, and Keegan Michael Key to talk about high school, the good, the bad, and everything in between. My teenage mood swings are getting harder to manage. The JV Club. Find it on Maximum Fun. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.